Hi guys, I hope everybody is doing well today. Um, I'm back with another video. Thank you for being patient with me while I took a couple of weeks off, took some much needed vacation. We went to um, Colorado to visit my brother who lives out there and then we went to Florida um, for a week to visit my friends and family and then also to do some work on uh, one of my boyfriend's friend's older friend is like a friend of his dad's boat so we did some of that um and now we are back in spain and i don't know if you noticed i we might have noticed it last time but we are in an apartment now uh which is really exciting um, i'm super super duper happy to finally be um on land at least living still working on the boat obviously um yachty life but uh, very happy to be on land. We're right in the center of town and here in Palma, like right um, in the historic center. There's so much nearby. I can like walk out the door, get groceries and be back within like 30 minutes instead of like the hour and a half it took before. So I'm very happy about all of that. Um, so very exciting news and it means I can more easily do my YouTube videos now. Um, so everything is great. I'm very excited. Like good things are coming. Um, this year, 2022 has been a blessing so far. So I'm excited to see what the rest of it holds. Um, but enough of that chit chat. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about travel today. Um, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about really good, um, some of my favorite weekend getaway destinations in the United States. So before we get into it, if you guys wouldn't mind just giving this video a like and a subscribe, it would mean the world to me and it really helps my channel to grow. Um, I'm trying to get to 1000 subscribers. Um, so please just make sure you do that to help me out. It would mean the world to me, but let's get into it. Okay, so destination number one that I'm gonna say is probably one of my favorite weekend spots to go to in the United States is Savannah, Georgia. So Savannah is this beautiful little Southern town. There's lots of history, lots of really good restaurants, good bars, it's amazing. Um, it is very Southern. Uh, the Hilton Head Savannah Airport is nearby, pretty easy to get into. You could also fly into um, either Charleston or Jacksonville. Um, both would be, I think Charleston would be about a three hour drive in Jacksonville, um, about two and a half hour drive. Uh, so a really good spot if you want good Southern food, if you want some really good um, nightlife, like really great, like they've got piano bars and all sorts of good stuff. They've got some really wild restaurants too, a beautiful historic section. Um, and you learn a lot about like colonial America, um, you know, and the impact that it had on the people there. You learn about the lives of the enslaved people as well. Um, quite a few uh, attractions to visit um, and just a lot of history, a really important spot in America and also just stunning. So highly recommend Savannah. It is like one of my number one destinations. It's good for bachelor and bachelorette parties. Also great if you wanna get married there, if you're on a romantic trip, like Savannah's got it all. You can find something for everybody. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Okay, so my second destination, this was a little bit more pricey than Savannah. Savannah tends to be pretty economical, but this second destination is well worth it if you love wine, which I don't know about you, but I definitely do. Um, Sonoma and Napa Valleys are a really stunning place to visit. Just the scenery is beautiful. The resorts out there are just wow like absolutely spectacular some really cool um places to stay um the little towns out there i mean like every i feel like every town has like four michelin star restaurants so you know the food is amazing and also vineyards lots of vineyard tours you can arrange different day excursions where you hit up like three or four different wineries you can do tastings lunch picnics um they got hot air balloon rides all sorts of different really great um, countryside stuff. So if you're like wanting the taste of Italy without having to fly internationally, um, Sonoma or Napa Valley is a great spot for you to check out. Um, like I have clients going there. September is definitely the busy season because that is harvest season. So it's going to be the busiest. It's going to be the most expensive September and October, but the weather is perfect. So if you want to go ahead and book for this year, that's what I recommend you go. And I would also recommend you start looking now because things will book up um, for that time of year. So if you're looking for a trip to get out there um, and try some different California wines, um, highly recommend, you know, California, I feel like the wines in California, they used to be sort of like, you know, like baby brother to Italian or like the 
classic European wines, but Californian wines are not like that anymore. They've really become an elegant um, style, a whole new world wine of their own. They're no longer like the poor cousins to the European wines. They have their own rightful place in the world of wine. So um, if you're interested in trying something new and maybe getting a little bit different than a trip that you would expect, I highly recommend checking out um, Southern California and visiting those destinations. Okay, destination number three, we're gonna go back to the cities, New Orleans. I know I'm doing a lot of like Southern destinations here, but New Orleans is just incredible. I went to New Orleans, when did I go? I mean, I've been a couple times, but I went again as an adult for the first time um, as a, someone who could legally drink um, in 2019. So like September, October of 2019. And I had an amazing time. Again, very similar to Savannah, girls trips, boys trips, romantic getaways. Um, Savannah, I mean, not Savannah, excuse me, New Orleans is just incredible. There is so much history, so much culture. Like you wouldn't think that like somewhere in the United States has culture, a lot of people don't. I am not one of those people. I think the U.S. has a lot of culture and I think people actually um, tend to look down on a lot of America because they think we don't. But New Orleans has so much going on. The music, the history, the food. I mean, Cajun and Creole food. Like, wow, it's just amazing. So if you want like really good Louisiana food, if you want to visit the bayou, see some alligators, um, here's some really good bluesy, jazz, Mardi Gras happens in New Orleans. There's a lot going on there. I highly recommend you check that out. Obviously, New Orleans, um, you're not gonna be able to get to go to Mardi Gras this year because time is up. It's like in next week. Um, but for next year, you're gonna wanna start looking now anyway. So just get that in your brain if you wanna do something a little fun for Mardi Gras next year now that the world's starting to open back up. Uh, world has kind of pretty much opened up in the America side of things. Um, and you want to visit New Orleans, definitely check it out. It is worth it. Okay, so heading back up the East Coast, um, I'm going to say that again, this is a good, another fall destination, um, is heading to Boston and Salem, Massachusetts. These two spots. I love Boston, but I love, love, love Salem. If you are into like weird, spooky history, kind of like quaint, hippie, witchy stuff. Uh, you just want something really unique and fun uh, to do um, and really get like a different side of big cities. I think that Boston and Salem are a really cool place to go. There's tons of revolutionary history. So if you want to like feel some American pride, go and do um, what is called the Freedom Trail in Boston and go to like the Paul Revere house. You can go and do the Boston Tea Party experience. Um, there's so much to do with the revolution there. Um, so much history. It's a really cool place. Also, the beauty, the the buildings, the buildings are just beautiful. Like they really are stunning. Um, so Boston is cool, and then Salem, which is just like a 30 minute train ride outside of town, is also really really stunning. Um, and it's just a cute little town. It does book up in October, which is like the, this big festival essentially they have every year. October is always slam and like the whole month, everybody's dressed up in Halloween costumes. It's amazing. It's like my dream destination because I love dressing up. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Even if you don't visit in October, like either going in November or September, if you like schedule it right, you can see the leaves change and you can drive up into, um, New Hampshire and out to Danvers and some of the, um, like if you go up the coast, like, or not up the coast, up into the mountains, um, a little bit, there's some really stunning, uh, like, um, state parks up there that you can experience like all the leaves changing colors and stuff if you go during the fall and also just a really great getaway during the summer to like kind of escape the heat you can go sailing along the coast um like the the you can go to salem harbor uh the when and if is a really famous schooner that was owned by general Patton that sails out of there um and then in boston of course there's tons of schooner cruises and then you can go all up and down the coast and that being said if you'd want to combine like boston and salem with a little bit longer of a trip and you don't want to stay in one place for a whole two weeks or something you go on up the coast and visit like maine like bar harbor maine is one of the most beautiful little towns i have ever seen in my life like just really like stunning scenery but kind of like spooky at the same time i don't know how to explain it like 
when you go, you'll understand like why Stephen King is the way he is because he lived up there. Like it just, it'll make sense. Um, so definitely look into those destinations if you're looking for either a weekend trip or like a little bit of a longer domestic getaway. Those are some really great options for you. Okay, and number five, I'm only gonna give you guys five today if you want more um, travel destinations and travel tips and travel inspo, you can always head over to my blog. It's linked down below. You can also head to my Instagram. I give you guys lots of travel tips and travel advice over there as well. There's also plenty of reasons as to why to work with a travel advisor because we're great and we know our stuff. So, but anyways, destination number five is St. Augustine, Florida. And of course, I might be a little biased because I'm from there. But St. Augustine truly is a really amazing destination, like everywhere else, except for Sonoma, but there is history there too. St. Augustine is full of really incredible history, and unlike everywhere else, it was not an English settlement. Um, I guess New Orleans wasn't really either, um, but it was a Spanish settlement. So each of these places, you know, Boston's very English, New Orleans is very French, St. Augustine is very Spanish. And you have Florida style food with a Spanish twist, or you have Spanish style food with a Florida twist, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, so, so much good food, so much to do. The coast is amazing in St. Augustine. There's surf, there's 23 miles of beaches, and the rest is history. That is our slogan. Um, but really, really amazing big white sandy beaches, good surf, good sun. Um, and, you know, it doesn't feel quite so commercially. Like, there are a lot of tourists, so I don't want to say it's not touristy because there is, like, a huge tourist draw for St. Augustine. But it is not commercial in, like, how the sense that a lot of Florida does kind of tend to be Disney World. Like, there is much more to Florida than Disney and Miami and Key West. Um, not that I'm not saying I don't love all those places because... I like almost cried when we couldn't make it to Disney when we were last in Florida. So don't get me wrong. Um, but I do think that St. Augustine is a really special sort of destination and that it's well worth checking out if you haven't, if you want to see a different side of Florida and you want to get away somewhere in the summer that's not all the way far south, especially if you're driving from somewhere else, check it out. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you are heading on a weekend or long weekend destination somewhere soon, let me know in the comments. I would love to see where all of you guys are traveling or what your favorite weekend spots are. If I mention one of them, let me know. Um, I'm super glad to have chatted to you guys about this and I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye.